Former NASA astronaut Colonel Terry Vertz is with us now to talk more about this. Uh, welcome to you, sir. Appreciate you being with us. How problematic are these issues on the Starliner to get these astronauts back safely? Well, this is a test mission. This is the first human uh, mission with this, with this vehicle, and there's always issues no matter what the spaceship, you know, they're going to have uh, uh, problems happen. So the helium is important. It pressurizes the propulsion to let the rockets fire to bring them back. Like uh, Kelsey just said, there's plenty of helium on board. There's lots of margin. So I think this is more a situation of caution than it is, you know, in any type of actual danger. How about the heat sensors, right? I mean, they're going to be facing 300,000 degree heat um, Fahrenheit on their re-entry. What are the factors being considered to make that safely? Well, I, I have not heard of any problems with the heat shield, so I think that's that's not going to be an issue. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Like I said, this is a test flight, and so you know everything is going to be looked at and looked at a uh, hundred different ways. One of the problems with the helium and also the the RCS jet, the rocket jets that they lost during rendezvous, that's in the service module, which is the back part of the capsule. And that that is where the the fuel and propellant and batteries are and so on. That actually comes back and burns up in the atmosphere. So we they won't get that back. They won't be able to analyze exactly what's going on. So they want to take the time that they can now to make sure they understand it. Because once they undock and come back to Earth, those valves and those jets are gone forever. You know, uh, as we all do, that they plan for every contingency. What would be the plan if, for some reason, they can't get back on the Starliner? What are some other options? Well, the, there's no plans for that at all right now. They're planning on them coming back. And the good news is these jets they're having problems with are like the third backup. So the main system is not having any problems. The main engines that let them fly back to Earth is not having any problems. But if some unexpected additional plan problems that we haven't seen yet happened, they could always come back on a on a SpaceX Dragon capsule or even the Russian Soyuz. But again, that is so many failures deep. That's not anticipated um, at all. They're planning on coming back on the Boeing Starliner. You know, Colonel, I look at some of the video of these astronauts in space, and it looks like they're having so much fun. I think about one of my favorite places to visit, Hawaii, right? And if I were told, you're going to have to stay another two or three weeks at your favorite happy place, um, how disappointed are they that they have to stick around at the ISS a little bit longer? And how do they make best use of that time? Well, it's it's funny. My, my last flight, when I was commander of the station, we had a, a a Cygnus spacecraft and a Russian Progress and a Boeing SpaceX. They all three of them blew up in an eight month period. And when the Russian one blew up, they, we actually got stuck in space. We were low on supplies and we didn't know how long we were going to be stuck for. So I helped work on an IMAX movie called A Beautiful Planet. It was probably the most important, the best thing I did when I was in space. Um, we we had a lot of work that we did. It, it was my chance to be in space, so it was not the worst thing. I know some astronauts that have been delayed have been really bummed. For me personally, I loved it. And plus, you know, the space station crew will be more than happy to have these Boeing, uh, two Boeing astronauts around for a few days to get some free labor. So <laughs> I'm sure they'll be they'll be busy, put to work, and I'm sure they'll enjoy their last few days in space. Yeah, right. Soak it all in. You don't know when the next time you'll be back. What more can we learn exactly. from missions like this about safe space travel and exploration? Well, I think the big um, benefit of this Boeing capsule Starliner is that it gives us some redundancy and backup. Right now, America only has uh, SpaceX's Dragon, the crew Dragon capsule. So this will give us two different ways to get people into space. Soon we'll have Orion, which is part of the Artemis moon program. Uh, so the main benefit is to have um, redundancy and backup. And every time you fly a new spaceship, you learn things. You learn better ways to do things, better ways to make helium valves. Uh, so there, there's always learning to be had. And is the return the most dangerous part of a journey like this? I mean, what's going through these astronauts' heads as they do get ready to come back to Earth? Right. So as a test pilot, everybody always wants to see launch. Launch is cool. It's the big rocket. It, launches are really cool. But for me, as a test pilot, I always thought that the landing was the most amazing part because a lot of countries have launched things into space. North Korea is launching these ridiculous nuclear missiles they have. But bringing people and cargo back to Earth has only been done by a few countries. So I think the return is a much bigger deal. Now, the good news is Boeing has already flown this capsule twice without astronauts on board. Um, and they they understand that part very well, uh, their reentry. So there's no 
anticipated problem. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.